The only way you will be accepted is because you worship this God. And once you worship this God, the only way you will be accepted within the group to higher status is to be highly, highly pro-social and highly moral. And so it sets off this arms race of morality. But then you have the alternative, which is if you do not accept the group, if you are not part of the group, then you are, you're not just a member of a different group. You're worse than that. You're, you're immoral. And you're not just immoral, you're in league with Satan. You're in league with the devil. You're utterly evil. And so it's entirely justifiable to fight you and indeed to destroy you, potentially, because you are utterly evil. You are in league with Satan. You are the worst possible thing. And so what this group perceives the world as is basically as a fight, a, a cosmic battle between good and evil, between God and Satan. And they are on the side of God because they are Christians and everybody that is not Christian, everybody that is, that is not part of this highly, highly internally cooperative group um, is on the side of Satan. Uh, it's much worse than simply being a member of an out group. They are evil. They are inherently wicked. So that's the second thing which this, this church uh, brings about. And what you see in this book is that you have a reinterpretation of this book uh, by Hofstadter, a reinterpretation of the Old Testament texts such that you are no longer simply killing people because they are foreign, because remember you're trying to convert foreigners and bring them into the group. Um, you are killing people uh, because they are evil. So these, these groups that are wiped out, the Canaanites and whatever, according to Oregon, according to the uh, early church fathers, according to... Uh, uh, there's, 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 there's many of them that he goes through. Um, they, are, uh, they are Philo and Justin the Martyr and uh, all these kinds of Prudentius and all these kinds of people. Uh, th this is all a matter of vice. These people are evil uh, and therefore uh, they can be, you know, they, 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 they can, that's, uh, that's, that's why God uh, wiped them out. And you end up with this tension in the in in the in the in the group, which is very very interesting, because you have the third component of Christianity. The first, of course, is that you have this this God, this idea of God, and God is highly pro, highly unbelievably moral, and wants everyone to be moral. You're a member of the in group because you believe in God only. It's nothing to do with ethnicity, and this allows the group, of course, to expand and expand and expand and come up with um, you know its gene pool can expand and it can come up with geniuses and whatever, and then expand more and expand more and expand more and more geniuses and more and more and more, and, more. and it can hold together Together because it's now absolutely nothing to do with ethnicity in a way that it wasn't with Rome. This wasn't the case. It can now it can now develop a huge polity with a very very high level of genius, which is very 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 strongly group selected, and um, which sees those that, that do not um, do not take on Christianity as 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 wicked and evil. But also it holds within it this idea that the Bible is the word of God. The Bible is inerrant. The Bible is the word of God, and this means, and this is very interesting, that at times of crisis. Um, you, you have things that you can draw upon to justify simply murdering the out group, um, and so and so therefore the level of negative of negative ethnocentrism can at certain times be high as well. A because the out group can be regarded as in league with the devil, as in league with Satan, um, and B because then you have these these justifications and there's this tension with the church fathers as to what to do about these. Sometimes they say, oh well, it should be seen allegorically. It's they're not literally saying that God told you told the Israelites to kill people. But then other times the church fathers are sort of more reticent about this and they're saying, oh well yeah, it is literally killing them. And sometimes that can be justified in the in the name of of, of destroying evil. And so you have these highly, highly group selected elements within the, the corpus of Christianity, which allow you to be extremely lethal and extremely group selected when the time comes. And so this is the genius of Christianity. It, because of it, the fact that it, your membership is nothing to do with your uh, genes, your ethnic group, you have this highly, you, it's just to do with being highly pro-social, unbelievably high in positive ethnocentrism, but also potentially very, very high in negative ethnocentrism when you need to be. Therefore, you, you, you have a group that can expand and expand and expand and expand and expand more and more genius, more and more and whatever, um, more and more selection for religiousness. Uh, but it can be lethal when the time comes. And this can be seen in their reaction to foreigners. So, for example, De Nisco, who was a Spanish conquistador, basically argued the Pope has said these lands are ours. The Pope is God's representative on Earth. These people are not giving us their lands. These these uh, these 
Incas or whatever. And consequently, we have the right to kill them. We have the right to, fight, to, to wipe them off the face of the earth. And then, so, therefore, we have this strong selection for within, within Christianity um, for religiousness. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and basically, the more religious group, the more religious group is going to be more ethnocentric, uh, more positively ethnocentric, and more negatively ethnocentric, and is therefore more likely to win the battle of group selection. And you see this even within Christianity. So you can see how, for example, the Saxons were much more, were, were the ones that were Christian. They were high, very high in positive ethnocentrism and negative ethnocentrism. They defeat the Vikings. Alfred the Great, for example, who was extremely religious, defeats the Vikings and converts the Vikings to Christianity. Then you have the Normans. The Normans were much more religious than the Saxons. On the night before the Battle of Hastings, the Normans prayed and whatever. They were extremely religious. They were highly, highly religious, highly, and therefore highly positively negatively ethnocentric, and they defeated the Saxons, who were much less religious, and on the night before the Battle of Hastings were just drinking and corralling and whatever. Then, as we move on, you have the you have these you have further movements. So once you have Christianity, then of course you're going to get even within the Christian polity, you're going to get further battles for status, and you're going to get some people manifesting who are more religious than other people. And the more religious people within Christianity are going to dominate over the less religious Christians. An example of this is Protestantism. The Protestant the Protestants were basically fundamentalist the fundamentalist Christians of their day. They were even more pro-social, pro morality, uh, you know, extraordinarily religious, uh, signalling of their virtue and their and their religiousness and their holiness than were the Catholics. And so what you see is the Protestants ultimately displacing the Catholics. Uh, within England, for example, the middle class that were more likely to be Protestant rising up and dominating um, the upper class who were more likely to be Catholic uh, and, uh, and, and basically taking over. Not least that they had more children because they, having children was the will of the Lord and, it was their, and they had more children, uh, but also they were simply more religious more cooperative, more ethnocentric, more violent to the outsider, and ultimately uh, they they triumph. Uh, and then in, in the, the English Civil War, what you have is the fundamentalist Protestant roundheads versus the more sort of Anglican Church of England Protestantism plus a bit of Catholicism um, uh, establishment of Charles I, and it's the Protestants that dominate. Eventually the it, the uh, royalists reassert authority, but by then the nature of the country has changed and the country has been moved in this much more Protestant, fundamentalist, puritanical direction. And this process continues of this puritanization right up until the Victorian era. Uh, then the countries that are Protestant, uh, so England is an example of this, England is a highly Protestant country, a highly religious country, um, and it dominates over the French. And this can be seen in terms of the extent to which the two peoples expanded. It dominates over the French in terms of group selection. The French are Catholic, the French are less religious, less inspired by the Lord, and whatever. And so, and so eventually the English uh, do dominate over the French, and it is the English English Empire, which dominates the British Empire, or the Pro this Protestant Empire, which dominates the world. Then within England, you have the Puritans, the most religious people within England, and they and they the the, 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 the strongly strongly religious people, the most strongly Christian people who strongly worship God and strongly believe in this in group morality and out group of the devil and all these strongly ethnocentric values, and it is this group selected values, and it is this group that goes to America, founds America. America is more religious eventually than the decadent English, um, for, for genetic reasons and perhaps for environmental reasons because of the stresses of being in America and Native Americans fighting them, whatever, and eventually the more religious Americans displace the less religious British and the more religious Americans, those who fear the Lord more, are the ones that dominate because they are more group selected, because they are more strongly Christian. And what Christianity what they, are, they are more fervent in their belief in God and they are more fervent in a belief in the Christian God that preaches this extraordinarily high level of morality, and pre in group morality and cooperation, and preaches that the outgroup is in league with the devil um, and indeed preaches that in, 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 in certain circumstances there are these Old Testament texts upon which you can draw, which are the will of God, which can be interpreted if you want to as literal suggestions to kill the outgroup. So you've got this perfect balance with Christianity. You see this perfect group selected balance, which you don't with Judaism, of intense in-group morality because the, you're not a member of the group if you're if you're just through kinship. You could only be it through 
worshipping God and the, uh, this particular God and this particular God demands intense in-group morality and therefore you have to showcase and prove that you have this morality and you do this by creating by, by a virtue signalling and uh, morality signalling frenzy and also by fervently signalling your worship of that God and by fervently being more and more and more religious and this system will select out those who are not moral enough in a very extreme way uh, more so than other groups uh, would have done um, indeed you had execution for almost all all crimes in, 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 in medieval Europe. It will select out those that are not moral enough uh, and it will use justifications from the Old Testament, from this corpus, which is the word of God, which it has in order to do this, in order to kill these people off. And it will see the outsiders as in league with the devil and thus up for being uh, completely destroyed. So there's these three prongs, the, the intense in-group morality with nothing to do with ethnicity. One, Two, the, out, the people that are in the outgroup are, are in league with the devil. Uh, and three, the ability to selectively draw upon um, a, a highly group-selected, non-moral, sort of totally tribal, group-selected way of seeing things selectively um, in order to be the most adaptive. And that is what you have with Christianity. And that is, that it, is it is therefore meta-group selection. It is, it is super group selected um, and it allows this genius strategy therefore to be maintained um, which allows the group to expand it because every as uh, expand and expand and expand at the expense of other groups uh, because of course uh, it is so open to outsiders uh, within certain uh, adaptive boundaries and now of course what we're seeing is that we've lost Christianity Christianity's gone Christianity is dying out uh, the, the only people that are group selected now in the West are Christians um, um, who are native and it's gone it's going it's going and um, what is, is being displaced by what God, God is now favoring God who favors the group God is now favoring Muslims because the Muslims are the ones that are the more group selected. The Muslims are the ones that fear the Lord. Um, and, and the Muslim Islam is, of course, related to the Old Testament. It draws upon the Old Testament. Uh, it, it draws upon Christianity as well. Muhammad had, a, had relatives that were Christian. Um, and, and it is therefore they, the more group selected, who are winning. So it is the group always that is the most group selected that is blessed by the Lord. And until recently, that has been Christianity. And now it's looking like it's going to be replaced by Islam. But this, of course, doesn't have to be the way because there are still those that are holding out on, on Christianity, holding out on the most group selected thing that, that, that perhaps the world has ever seen. And those people are having more children. They are outbreeding those that now worship Baal and, and, and whatever. And so we will see what happens in the future.